play one. I am I, you my son from the Fantastic Academy. Today we are going to start a brand new series, the series of biology. But first, we need to answer one thing. I don't remember what it was. What was it? What was it? What was it? What? Oh, right. What was last episode's quiz question answer? The answer is that photosynthesis is an endothermic reaction. Now that we've got that down to the way, let me answer a simple question. What is biology? Well, let's split up that word in biology. Bio means life and ology means the study of. Life the study of. That doesn't make any sense. Okay, let's put it to the shuffle machine. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. The study of life. That makes sense. So biology is the study of life. Now, today we are going to talk about microorganisms. Now, what are microorganisms? Let's break down that word. Eh? Micro means very small. And organism means living thing. So a microorganism is a very small living thing. And by very small, I mean super small. It's not even this big. It's like so much smaller. Now, let's give a brief history of these wonderful things we call microorganisms. The history of microorganisms goes way back. Ancient Jane scriptures talk about super small living things living in another realm, as they say. But the first serious study on microorganisms dates back to the Roman Empire. A book was published saying you should not put your farm in wet area because wet area has lots of these tiny living things and these tiny living things will eat up your, all your food you grow in the farm. So you should always put your farm in an area which has a little bit of water in it to support the plant but not too much water. Now, this is where I would like to make a book. Microbes are very much like humans. They eat food, yum, 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 water. They can't survive in very hot <gasps> or very cool <gasps> conditions. They can only survive in conditions which humans can survive. Now, back to history. The real study of microbes, actual study, began when Antoine ran. I don't even do it. This guy, he invented the microscope. What is the microscope? Let's break up that word. Micro means very small. You all may know that. Of scope means seeing. So very small seeing. That doesn't make sense. But let's put it to the shuffler. Seeing very small things. That is what the microscope does. It allows us to see very small things. It's essentially a bunch of magnifying glasses put on top of each other. Now, if you don't know how those work, we've got a whole separate video about that. Okay. So, this guy used his microscope to look at things and what did he find? He found these things called animalcules. What are these animalcules? Let's break down the word. Animal means animal. Cules means thing. Animal thing. And as I mentioned, microbes behave a lot like animals. Now, let's stop our history and talk about these microbes in a little more detail. Micro 
cubes are divided into five types. What are these five types? Well, there are fungi, bacteria, virus, algae. No, 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 wait. CGI team, stop. CGI team, you've got the spelling of algae wrong. It's not A-L-G-I, it's A-L-G-A-E. I don't know how that makes sense. It's, that's just the way it is. And finally, you have Protozoa. At least that's what makes sense, Protozoa. Now, let's talk a little bit in detail about one of these groups. Let's roll it as to see which one of these groups will be. Fungi. Oh, right. So what are fungi? They're things like mushrooms. Well, mushrooms are just one type of fungi. Also, the mushroom isn't the whole fungi. You see, the mushroom is just the fruit part of the fungi. Below the ground, there's this giant root system, so to speak, that gives the fungi its nutrients. This is why if you Google search biggest living thing in the world, you'll come up with two answers. This tree called Pando, yes, it has a name, and more interestingly, this thing called the honey fungus. You see, this honey fungus isn't just a bunch of yellow things sticking out of the ground. It's actually a vast system of roots that connects those yellow things sticking out the ground. If you combine this root system with the yellow things sticking out of the ground, what do you get? You get something bigger than the blue whale. So yeah. This is serious business. But mushrooms are just one of the three types of fungi. What are the other two? Well, the second type is yeast. Now, I know I said it like east, the opposite of west, but it's actually spelled with a Y. CGI team, keep track of that, okay? So, yeast. Is what your mom puts when she's making atta. This yeast combines, it eats the sugars in the flour. And as a byproduct, it gives up flavor molecules and carbon dioxide, the thing that makes flour fluffy. Now, if you don't understand how these chemical reactions happen, our previous video explains that in great detail. But for now, we'll move on to the third type of fungi, molds. Have you ever seen bread that looks like this? Well, there's a reason it's all black. And the reason is mold. This black area, it's mold. So, the mold reproduces, that is, make more of itself. And it reproduces using these things called spores. Spores are, how should I describe it? Bending needle shaped things on the mold. Now, these bending needle shaped things have baby fungi on them. So these baby fungi get spread by the wind to, you guessed it, other parts of that bread. So in this way, the mold can start here, but cover the entire bread. Now, let's talk about how fungi has affected real people in real situations. A long time back in the 1800s, people in Ireland liked growing potato. Why? Because potato had lots of nutrients and it can grow in many different climates. So potato was the best food available. 
table in Ireland. But Susie, but that over here went bad. It doesn't wasn't good to eat. But that over here went bad. But that over here went bad. And soon we've got the Irish potato famine. What just happened? Well, what just happened was a case of blight. Blight is a fungus that feeds off plants. And this specific blight really like potato. Just like the bread, it ruined the potato. No one could eat the potato. Another example was Foodlandia. Made by Henry Ford because apparently he liked naming things after himself. So, Henry Ford wanted tire to make car and he wanted rubber to make tire. So, where to get rubber? Well, he decided he will get rubber from South America, a spot in Brazil. Now, there were two problems with this plan. One problem was that the workers didn't like this new place in Brazil called Fordlandia. The workers didn't like it. We may talk about that when we have a series about social issues. But here's the second problem. The rubber growing in South America had this blight disease which ruined the rubber. No one could use the rubber to make tire. Now, people from the British Empire took the rubber from Brazil, which didn't get the blight yet, and took it all the way to the other side of the world, to Asia. That is why there are no flights between Asia and South America. No direct flight. There are indirect flights, but no direct flight. The reason why is very simple. You see, the rubber that the British took to Asia is last rubber in the world. So people are afraid if they start a flight, then the blight from South America will come in the food packages to Asia. And bang! There's no rubber left in the entire world. So that is one of the main reasons there are no flights between Asia and South America. Now, I hope you found this video interesting. Bye bye! No, 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 no! Wait, I think there's something we forgot. We forgot the quiz question.